my name is Seren. It means direction. According to my tradition and many traditions around the world, you're given a name to live justice to its meaning throughout a lifetime. The leadership educator and elder, Mac McCartney, shared that a leader is someone who has the constant courage to act upon what he or she knows to be truth. It is someone, no matter what context he or she operates in, always seeks to help others to empower themselves. From a very young age and as a lifelong learner, I tried to live with this pursuit as a compass. And I discovered that finding a sense of direction in both your personal journey, but also in the collective journey as a generation, as humanity and as living species, we need to start with making a choice, a commitment and a promise to ourselves to live intentfully and consciously so that we can grow into the humans that we are capable to be in our precious lifetimes. I believe this has been a human pursuit across the ages, but now, more than ever, it is our collective calling. Business as usual doesn't respond any longer to the emerging new reality. We are in transition. We need a new story, a new way to carve out our collective sense of direction in multiple ways. And how do we do that in times of so much uncertainty and confusion? We live in the fourth industrial revolution. This is the time marked by exponential breakthroughs in technological advancement. Nano and biotechnology and artificial intelligence are important examples. But while we are technologically advancing at such a tremendous rate and speed, morally, we are regressing. How do we humanize the fourth industrial revolution? One of the most source ideas of Einstein is that we cannot solve our problems by the same level of thinking that created them. We need a new way of thinking. There's a very insightful description that describes that we need to shift from an ego system to an ecosystem, from competition to collaboration, from a chain of demand to a web of connections, from markets to networks, from the transactional to the transformational, from silos to synergy, but also from the experimental to the experiential, and from hierarchy to autonomy. There are different descriptions that describe this shift in different fields. Let me go quickly over five of them. For instance, in education, we can talk about the integration of both soft and hard skills. 21st century and transferable skills are great examples of this. In science, it is about tapping from both human uh, hemispheres of the human brain, both the left and the right hemisphere, when it comes to problem-solving approaches, the orderly, analytical, structured, detailed part of the human brain with the more chaotic, creative, intuitive part of the human brain. In world wisdom traditions and also different approaches in psychology and philosophy, it's about integrating both masculine and feminine qualities. But also, if you look at our bodies as such a miraculous living organism, it still needs a structure, a skeleton that holds it together. In the age of digitalization, our schooling systems and workplaces are often dominated by linear thinking, by fragmentation and specialization. But we are in this search together to find a reconciling factor, to find the middle way. And how do we enable this shift? What does this mean? for the current and future workforce in the age of digitalization? What does it mean for businesses and for organizations? 
Leading organizations recognize that we need new paradigms in the way we lead, learn, work, collaborate, design organizations, and also do business. I created the opportunity to conduct a PhD study in 117 countries. I had the opportunity to speak to 4,500 millennial young professionals and leaders worldwide, and it brought me to 28 countries across six continents to do my fieldwork, which was an incredibly enriching journey. I spent time with different communities, ranging from the grassroots to the artistic, to the interfaith, indigenous, scientific and business community. My data became a very rich representation of millennials, young professionals, leaders and future decision makers in these fields and in these countries. I explored how we can prepare the next generation of leadership and the future workforce in the age of digitalization. And I looked at whether millennials can be the potential carriers of the characteristics of new paradigm. My research insights revealed um, a model that can be followed with key learning indicators and needs that build strongly upon each other based on quantitative and qualitative data. I'll go over them. The first one is value-based leadership. This means the alignment of personal purpose with core values, professional skill sets, actions and results. You can also see this as aligning personal and professional development or purpose and profession. The second need is lifelong learning. In the age of digitalization, lifelong learning is about catching up with your skill set constantly so that you can catch up with the changing demands of the digitizing future. But in this context, it means the cultivation of value-based leadership as defined. I developed a, context, uh, a concept called conducive environments for lifelong learning. This means that you create a learning environment at the workplace where professionals can thrive, both a safe and stimulating learning environment. Safe enough to open up and ask yourself critical questions of that what is really meaningful and important to you, but stimulating enough to be pushed from your comfort zone and the edges of it so that you can live up to your full potential in each stage. In this way, work environments can become learning environments in which professionals can discover their purpose, cultivate their core values, grow personally, but also develop their talents, unleash their creativity, excel in their fields of occupation sector-wide, and from that foundation make impact, whether it is within the organization or outside of it, in their communities at large. The need is the need for mutual mentorship on equal grounds that I developed as a concept. This means that seasoned leaders, executives, middle managers are willing to transfer their expertise and knowledge to the younger generation while they are in a process of co-learning with them and standing on equal grounds. This is not only an idealistic pursuit if you look at how we practice these insights on the work floor. I have already established different organizations in which we create such settings and leadership trainings. But also when I consult Fortune 500 companies, I bring together CEOs and senior executive managers with middle managers and young professionals. In the first round of discussion, many prejudices come to the table. Millennials, they want to work on their personal development and ensure work-life balance and be promoted and make impact within the first few months of their jobs. And when the complaint storm is over, um, we often discuss what the learning needs are of millennials on the work floor and how this can serve the organization. And you immediately recognize that a ground for mutual understanding emerges in which the intergenerational divide can be bridged and solutions can be generated. Of course, it is important to mention that there are already organizations that are experimenting and implementing with this. 
So based on these insights and research and experiences, I have developed a leadership definition, a value-based leadership definition for the organization that I initiated called Synergize Earth Network. The definition goes as follows. Every person who strives to live a life in alignment with their authentic selves is a leader. They are continuously governed by their intentions and ethics in all spheres of life and strive to be in constant alignment with the essence of their beings in all they are and do. Leaders strive to co-create conducive environments for lifelong learning in which they can cultivate the quality of their lives while discovering, developing, and delivering their deepest purpose and greatest potential to the larger collective. Meanwhile, they support others in this parallel process of personal growth. They always strive to unite and synergize the unique and complementary capacities of everyone involved in a larger collective working towards a shared purpose. Why it is important to revisit leadership as such to anticipate on the future of work in the age of digitalization is because it is known that already in six years' time, millennials will comprise 75% of the global workforce, and Generation Z is already upcoming, as we know. Today's CEOs and managers report that they have challenges to onboard and retain and meet the expectations of their millennial workforce. If there is no effective plan in place, their organizations are likely to fall behind. I have learned that investing in the learning needs of young talent at the work floor can enable organizations to future-proof themselves. If they're able to harness the potential of their young talent, they can drive disruptive innovation to anticipate on the digital future. They can enhance diversity and inclusion across generations in team dynamics but they can also invest in the necessary cultural shift in their companies to meet the challenges of tomorrow. So support young talent at your work floor to develop the necessary professional skill set to succeed in their need to be purposeful and thrive. If we would want to anticipate and prepare the future of leadership and work, and if we want to prepare for the future and its velocity and find a collective sense of direction, we need to reimagine the CEOs, the organizations, the universities, and the employees of the future. It is clear that when this is not facilitated, young talent start their own jobs and companies. The fast-growing social entrepreneurship movement can be explained as such, whereby conscious capital is generated for societal pursuits as a need to do both good and do well. But what I would see as an emerging trend would be value-based entrepreneurship. It doesn't mean that you only create value for social impact, but you ensure that the professional development and skill set of young talent entirely aligns with their personal development and sense of belonging. And in the end, it all comes down to this. If employees, young professionals, young talent at your work floor if we as people can invest in ourselves and self-empower ourselves and find our compasses, we can become the authors of our own growth stories and thrive and flourish. And remember, as human beings, we are a work in progress. So our personal flourishing will enable professional flourishing and flourishing in agile and resilient working cultures, organizations. And ultimately, this will enable more thriving, just and sustainable communities and societies at large. And we will be able to bridge the gap between technological progress and the human factor, which is also known as moral regress, because we will be able to humanize the fourth industrial revolution. 
So my invitation to you, young and old, and as organizations, is to become, take ownership to become the authors of your own growth stories. I would like to close with a poem that represents this calling for us to practice this ourselves individually and institutionally and become invitational and also enablers of this calling for others. I will not die an unlived life. I will not live in fear of falling or catching fire. I choose to inhabit my days, to allow my living to open me, to make me less afraid, more accessible, to loosen my heart until it becomes a wing, a choice, a commitment, a torch, a promise. I choose to risk my significance, to live so that which came to me as seed goes on to the next as blossom, and that which came to me as blossom goes on as fruit. Thank you.